Well, hey there, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodds, and today we're gonna talk about five ways to duplicate just about anything in Photoshop. It's gonna go from just a total crash course, beginner's guide to duplicating anything in Photoshop to some more, I would say, intermediate to advanced tips and tricks on how you can uh, duplicate things in Photoshop. Either way, beginner or advanced Photoshop user, stick around, I think you'll enjoy it. I think you might learn a thing or two and have a lot of fun with it. I've certainly had a ton of fun putting this video together. Uh, far more interesting than I expected it to be when I first sat down and started writing. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into this video and get this thing started. All right. Right, here we are in Photoshop and let's just get this thing kicked off right away. The first method of duplication is the select and duplicate method and that has to do with either making a selection with one of the various selection tools or selecting an entire layer as we have here. Our hamburger is up on a new layer and you can duplicate an object by holding down the alt or option key and just drag out a copy. Added bonus, if you hold down shift you can slide it in a straight line. See, so, you know, I can keep holding down alt and option and dragging out copy after copy of this hamburger. That is one way to duplicate an object in Photoshop. Now heading over here to the second image, this still falls under the sort of beginner ways to duplicate something. We can use this tool right over here, the clone stamp tool. You can simply right click, choose the size brush you wanna work with. I'm going with about a 200 pixel brush, 40% hardness, that works for me. And then you want to sample from where you want to clone or duplicate. In this case, maybe the client says, look, we want a duplicate of this teal cupcake over here next to the pink one. I'm gonna do a couple things here. I'm gonna create a new layer by hitting the new layer icon. And here up in the top control bar, I'm gonna make sure that I'm sampling current and below. I'm also gonna make sure I have aligned turned on. Now I'm simply gonna hold down alt or option and I'm gonna select the far, well, maybe I'll select right here, the far left side of my cupcake. And you can see you get a little preview of what you're gonna be painting and then just click and begin painting. In that case, I sort of painted over over my, uh, my other cupcake a little bit. So I'm gonna try that again. There we go, we just go in there, start painting away. And you can see there's a lot of, uh, a lot of sort of gray, not so good background that's coming through. That's because we're, we're not working with a totally simplified, easy to work with background. But the beauty of working up on your own layer is you could easily apply a layer mask. That kind of goes beyond this tutorial at this moment. You could apply a layer mask and paint that stuff away. And you'd have a perfect copy of your teal cupcake right over there on the other side of the image. It gets better. All right, let's move over here to the third image. Now you may be looking at this saying, what in the world do we want to duplicate here? Well, let's have some fun with this and just explore the duplicating power of Photoshop. Again, we're still here within the easy ways of duplicating something in Photoshop. This is still the first technique in theory. Uh, we would grab the lasso tool here and let's say we want to take her eye. So I'm going to say loop a, loop a rough selection around her eye if I can get a handle on my mouse here. There we go, something like that is great. And then we'll slide up here to select, choose modify, choose feather. This is going to soften the edges of my selection. Something like 20 pixels is probably fine here. I'm gonna hit okay. And then this is where we duplicate this and then we can move it around. And the method of duplication is we have created a selection around the eyeball. We hit command or control J. And you can see here, we have the eyeball up on its own layer. It's still here on the bottom layer too. It's just up on this new layer as well. So then I can grab my move tool and I can say, let's, let's give her a third eye right there in the middle of her forehead. And it doesn't blend quite perfectly. So I could just double click on the layer and bring up my layer styles here and just alt or option click the blend if slider and just go ahead and blend the edges of the eyeball in until it just looks like it's really sunken into her forehead there. And that's a really fast and easy way to duplicate things as well. Sometimes just a simple ring it with a selection, maybe feather the edges a little bit and bounce it up onto its own layer using command or control J. All right, so those are some basic techniques for duplicating something. Let's go on to method number two, and this is using the patch tool. I guess you could argue this is a pretty simple technique as well. What I'm gonna do is move over here and grab my patch tool. The patch tool is located beneath the healing brushes. There it is, patch tool. The hotkey is the letter J. Now here, you may be seeing your patch tool set to content aware. You wanna set it back to normal and you wanna choose a destination. Now what we can do is loop a selection around this guy and his jet ski and all the sort of after waves uh, from, his, from his jet ski. And we can click and drag and drop this maybe right over here and then command or control D to deselect. And you can see other than the hard edge down here, which we can clean up with something like the spot healing brush, we can paint over this a little bit and just say, you know what, Photoshop, can you blend that a little for us? That's a little bit, maybe a little bit more than that. 
I think that made it look worse. I'll undo that. The point is when you have something like this, where you have a fairly clearly defined object, but you want to duplicate it over a lightly textured background like this, like a sky, like the ocean, maybe a very densely wooded forest, something like that. Sometimes using the patch tool set to destination is just a great, super fast way to duplicate something, get a really realistic result. And I mean, you saw how fast it was. It was so super quick and easy, a really great way to duplicate an object. All right, let's talk about a more uh, sort of advanced usage of the clone stamp tool. So in this case, let's say for whatever reason, the client says, we want a second version of this house, but we want it to sit right here on the lawn. Oh, and by the way, we want you to flip the house over. So uh, the, the this little back patio should really be over here on the far left of the document. No problem. Here's what we want to do. We want to grab the clone stamp tool. We probably want to create a new layer. It's just good to work on multiple layers, non-destructive, all that good stuff. And then I'm going to go window and I am going to choose to open my clone source panel right there. And there we have it. Now here in the clone source panel, the only thing I'm concerned with is this little icon right here, which is the mirror horizontal option. I'm going to hit that. Now all we have to do, make sure of course we're sampling current and below, so we're working on an empty layer, but we're sampling from the house layer. What we're going to do here is we are going to maybe select the front corner of the house to ensure that we line it up correctly. Let's go view rulers to turn on the rulers and then drag out a ruler and place it down by the front of the house. See how it's kind of like right there where the patio begins. So I'm going to alt or option click right on that to get that. And then I'm going to move over. Maybe I want to place the house right about here. What do you say? Something like that. And then just begin painting. We paint the house right in and you can see how it is flipping the entire home just as we want it to be. And the patio, sure enough, is over where we want it to be. Now, of course, because of the way we're painting this in, we're getting, you know, some funky skies and stuff up there. We would have to go in and mask that stuff away. But you can see just how quickly and easily we duplicate this entire house. In fact, I'm just speeding the video up here really quickly and going in with a lasso tool and trimming away all this junk up near the roof of this home just to help sell the effect a little bit more for us. And ah, isn't that nice? I trimmed the chimneys off just for the sake of saving a little bit of time. But there you have it. That quickly, we were able to duplicate that home and get it in place, mirrored exactly against what was there. All right, now moving along, I can close off the clone source dialog, or should I say the clone source panel. Let's head over here to this document. Now, what I want to do here is I want to extend this skyscraper. It's not really a skyscraper. We want to make it more like a skyscraper. We want this to go up into the sky quite a bit. I am going to just merge all of my layers. I did a little bit of gussying around with this before I uh, before I started the tutorial. I'm going to grab my crop tool here. So crop tool right there. I just have it all cleared out. You can hit the clear button to clear away anything. I want to extend my sky up a little bit just like that. Um, and just a quick kind of quick and dirty way to extend the sky is grab your rectangular marquee tool, drag a selection over it like this and go edit free transform right there and just pull it up. It does stretch it out. It does do some damage to it, but it's just a quick and dirty way because I didn't fully prepare the file before I started recording. All right, what I want to do, you can see it's, it's a complex building and it's moving up and away from the camera. So we need to be able to do this in perspective. And for that, we're going to utilize the good old vanishing point. Here within vanishing point, I'll just zoom out a little bit. I have my plane tool. It's located right there in the top left corner. I'm going to go ahead and just try to create a, a sort of rough plane uh, following the lines I can see. So I'm going to go like tip to tip on the outer side so the outer portion of this building. So I'm going to maybe start right about there and just say, bring this down across all of these, uh, the, all the points of the building. I click down here. I'm going to drag across and I'm going to bring this out to maybe right about here. And then I'm going to bring this up and over, trying to drag it across the tips of the building, just like that. So it's a little difficult to see because we have a blue grid. But then what I can do is I can grab the anchor handles of the grid and just say, you know what, grid, extend outward this way. Let's have you extend outward here to the left as well. Maybe I'll pull you down a little bit. And most importantly, we're going to go up, up, up and away because we're going to try to make this building just quite a bit taller here. And I'll just, you know, I'll pull it way up there and I'm going to widen it this way as well, just so we know we're all covered. So something like that is great. Then here in the vanishing point dialog, we have our clone stamp 
map tool. So I'm going to select that. And the same thing applies here. We're not going to get that same nifty preview that we had, but we hold down alter option. We get this little plus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm, I'm cloning off of this triangular point. So I know if I begin with like the bottom half of a triangle here, maybe out here at the point, I'll be lining my building up properly. So let me zoom in a little bit. Let me get the point I need. Hold down alter option. Let's just click on that point right there. And now here we do get a preview and I'm going to try to line this up as best I can. I'm going to actually switch back to my mouse from the tablet here for this. Let me try this here as I set the, set the old tablet aside. Let's go ahead and try to line this up as best we can. And then I just begin painting this in. And what you're going to see is as I get further and further away from the original building, I am going to, or this building is automatically going to get smaller and smaller. So I can zoom out here and you can see it's not perfect. We'd have to do some masking along it. We need to clean that up a little bit, things like that. All right, let's go ahead and try to sample one of these points again and go up here, line it up as best as we're able and go ahead and paint, paint, paint away and just make the building really, really tall. And we got to obviously clean this up here as well. So I can go ahead, let me sample. I don't know. We're really going to mix this up here a little bit and I could just go ahead and paint that in and then maybe bring it up up here too. It's not perfect. We want to spend some time going over making it perfect if this was in fact for a client. But you can see we can just have this building go on and on and on as far as we like. Uh, really as big as the document is. We could just keep painting away and saying, you know what, building, just go up as, as high as the eye can see. That little bit of lamp, see that's some lamp here that we copied off of the street. That's kind of annoying me. So let's go ahead and sample from this back end point right here. And we're going to try to cover that up as, as best we are able. Let's go ahead and just click once there to cover that up a little bit. Hit OK. And you can see we have duplicated this building and it goes on and on and on. Now, of course, you would go over with a mask and clean this up. I really probably should have done it on a new layer as I was preaching the preaching the virtues of using a, a, an additional layer. That would have made this a little easier, but we can still go over it pretty easily and clean it up. And we have our new duplicated building in perspective. Now, here for our final technique for duplicating something. This is another way to duplicate something in perspective, but in this case, it's it's a little difficult to duplicate sort of an object that looks so three-dimensional like this guy uh, using the vanishing point method. So there's another technique that I like to use. It still requires a vanishing point, but it sort of requires you finding the vanish point on, vanishing point on your own. And here's how we do it. We grab the line tool, which is located underneath your rectangle tool, line tool, and I like to give it a stroke. That's just going to stick out. Maybe a hot pink. That's great. And I'm going to give the stroke a a four pixel weight, something like that. And then I'm going to find some lines in my image. Now I kind of cheated here. I went with an image that's just super easy to do this with because you got two very defined lines. So I'm going to go with this line right along here, hold down space bar as you begin dragging out your line and I'm looking to follow this line. I'm going to pull it way off my document. So something kind of like that, right? There's my first line. No, they ignore that. That's me being dumb. And then the second line, I'm going to pull off the top part of this, this wall here uh, against which he's jogging. So something like that. You really want to get this as exacting as possible because the closer you get this to perfect, it, the results are uh, incredible. It really makes a big difference. So we have two lines in there that might be a little difficult to see, right? But you can definitely see them. They're there. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. What I want to do so we can see where these lines meet up is I'm going to sort of reverse crop this image. So we're going to grab our crop tool and I'm going to pull on the left hand handle over here. And I want to find where those lines intersect. That's my vanishing point right there. That's at least this is what I've been. This is so I've been told that is called your vanishing point. So now that we have our vanishing point, we have sort of a spot against which we are going to scale. And as I look at these lines, I'm thinking maybe I should have made them a touch thicker, but we can make this work. I have saved a selection that is wrapped around this guy. It's here in my channels panel. You can see it's called Jogger. I can load that as a selection. And again, this tutorial isn't really on selections. I've got a bunch of tutorials on making selections and things like that. So just save time. I'm going to go select load selection and choose to load the Jogger channel as a selection. You can see there it is. Now I'm going to select, make sure I select his layer. And I'm going to pop him up onto a new layer by hitting Command or Control J. All right, we've got the jogger. I actually want two copies of the jogger. So I'm going to hit Command or Control J again. All right, we got jogger one, jogger two, jogger three. All right, so this jogger right here, we're going to begin with this guy. And we're going to go edit, 
free transform again. You can see we've got our bounding box. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. That's just commander control and the plus and minus keys, by the way, if you're not familiar. I'm going to grab the center anchor point here, and we want to move the center anchor point to be exactly on top of our little horizon. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here, hold down the space bar, and just navigate over, and I'm going to drag that point and just get it as close to exactly where those two lines meet up as you can. Zoom out just a little bit, and now I'm going to make the smaller copy of him first. So this is important. You are now going to be scaling with that as your reference point. You can utilize a reference point by holding down the Alter Option key, but we also want to scale him proportionally, so we want to hold down Shift as well, and as we do that, we're going to scale him down just like that. There we go. I think something like that looks good. We move him back. Oh boy, you may be saying, why does it look so fake? Well, because we didn't copy the shadow as well. We're going to do that in a second. Let's take the second copy of him here. Again, we're going to go edit, free transform. Let's make this the bigger copy. So I'm going to drag my little reference point, the anchor point, right to the middle there. And now I'm going to hold down shift and option. That's shift and alt on the PC. And I'm going to make a bigger copy of him. This copy of him is going to be way up here. We don't need to worry about shadow here because we can't see his foot on uh, on screen. So there we have it. We now have three copies of this guy, and we're just scaling him based on our perspective point. Before we get rid of our perspective lines, let's just loop a really loose selection around our shadow down here. So with the lasso tool, just go ahead and paint the selection around this. Something like that. Maybe I'll just add a little bit more of that shadow. I really don't want to get any of his shoe, though. I'm going to try to be careful of that. Something like that. And I'm going to make sure I go back down to layer zero here, the layer that actually has the shadow. I'm going to go select, say modify. I'm going to feather this, I don't know, maybe like 15 pixels, something like that, just to smooth it out. And again, we'll go command or control J to duplicate this up onto its own layer. It doesn't look like we've changed anything because it all blends in and fits in. We're going to change that here by going edit, free transform. And once more with the shadow, we'll drag our center anchor point, our reference point, and hold down shift option, that's shift alt on the PC. And we're just going to scale this down until it looks like the shadow is kind of underneath his foot. Enter a return key to commit that change, and there we have it. We have our shadow. All right, let's shut off our perspective lines. We don't need them. Let's grab our crop tool over here and drag the left handle back in, and there we go. Snap it right into place. Now we have our three copies of the guy. You could stop at this point. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with it. Let's color code these guys red, green, and blue. So we'll begin with the backmost guy here. Let's go to our adjustments layer. Let's go hue saturation. I'm going to collapse that. We want to clip the hue saturation adjustment layer so it only affects this layer. The hotkey is command option. This is control alt and the letter G. Double click on hue saturation. We're going to say, hey, look, uh, just target the blues. And in fact, target also cyan into like the greens. And then I'm going to swing the hue over here toward red. It's only going to kind of make it pink. So we're also going to say, you know what, let's target those cyan tones as well and start pushing them toward red. Let's desaturate. Ooh, no, don't, de don't desaturate that too much. We're pushing it a little bit too far into the red, maybe something like that. Let's go back to blues. Let's desaturate our red a little bit, something sort of like that. I think that'll work for us. So we've got our red shirt, uh, the guy in the middle. We now want this guy to be have the green shirt. So we'll go up real quick, select load selection, load our jogger selection right there and hit OK. And we're going to go back to our adjustments, apply a hue saturation adjustment layer, collapse our adjustments panel. Now you can see we have masked our adjustment layer to only attack the white area of the mask, which is the area of our jogger. Double click on the hue saturation adjustment layer. Once more, we'll go blues. Say, look, extend the blues. Don't, don't just affect blues. It affects some cyan and green as well. And then we're going to go ahead and make this shirt more green, maybe something like that. We could bump up the saturation a little bit, I suppose. I almost kind of like the ocean green. Well, eh. Maybe I'll push it a little bit more green, green, something like that's cool. And you can see quickly and easily, not only have we duplicated him, we've added the shadow, we've done it in perspective, we've even gone in and done some bonus color changing as well. And what else can I say? That's really kind of how I do most of my duplicating in Photoshop using a variety of healing brush and cloning tools and, and sizing and transforming and perspective and vanishing point and the, you know, the alter option dragging and all of that good stuff. There's just so many different ways you can duplicate things in Photoshop, as there should be, because there's so many different things that may need to be duplicated and all the different situations and yada, 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 yada. So, ladies and gentlemen, for learning how to duplicate darn near anything in Photoshop in pretty well any situation, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodds in Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. 
Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.